Is Elijah Wilkinson back with you? Um, should be. So Where, um, you should see him see him back on Wednesday. Did Colby play well enough that you now have to work them both in, or does Elijah go right back into where he was? I think Gossip played pretty pretty well, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll start with Elijah and, and um, see how it looks this week. Thanks, mm -hmm. Charles Odom. Hey Charles, how you doing? Oh, I'm good to see you. <laughs> I, see um, you. I I wanted to ask you about um, uh, Cordell. Um, how did you enter the season in terms of um, your thoughts on managing his workload? Did you have any concerns based on the second half of last season? And 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 obviously the results have been have, have been anything you could have hoped for so far this year. Yeah, it was uh, Charles. You know, you evaluate everything and um, we'll put together a plan. Uh, really try to how we wanted to manage the off season and uh, training camp, and there's still an art to it right now. And he's playing really good football, um, and I, I think Tyler's doing a decent job too, supplement some carries, and uh, we'll see where it takes off. But he's still a valuable piece, and we we can still move CP around if we need to. Um, quite off that subject, do you have any any thoughts on the um, NFL doing away with the? Pro Bowl, how do you think that will be received by players? Um, you know, Charles, I saw that memo. Uh, obviously, you know, we kind of got our focus on Cleveland. I'd be curious, you know, what the players think. You know, that's the one, those are the guys that it affects. So I really, you know, doesn't affect me one way or the other. Uh, obviously, the NFL did it. They did it for a reason. But uh, I'd be curious what the players think. Thanks. Yeah. Got your muted bug. Mark, you hear us? I'm here. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't yeah, hear yeah. I apologize. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Coach. Mark, no um, you wake up this morning with the fifth best rushing attack in the NFL. Um, you know, respectfully, there weren't like major upgrades made to the offensive line. So through three weeks, how do you grade? the improvement that you've had this year versus what you were able to do in the run game last year? Uh, you know, that's why I think numbers can be deceiving, Mark, sometimes. And I don't sit there and make excuses. But uh, privately, I, I thought we had a lot of progress towards the end of the year. We ran the ball better. And, um, you know, there was a couple stretches there, I think, starting with Jacksonville. And, um, you know, against some pretty good run fronts, Tampa the second time. And, then, you know, you lose, so you're not going to sit there and, and try to, oh, yeah, we – but privately, you could see the progress, and there's a lot. There's a philosophically how we've changed things up front. I think Dwayne Ledford's done a terrific job, and there's a lot of things we changed behind the scenes, and I won't go too really schematically. And when you do that, I knew there would be a little bit of short-term pain, and um, that's why you stick with it. And and you could see progress privately, and that's why you don't jerk the wheel all the time. And uh, and then some of it was you know out of practicality and necessity. But those guys are doing a really good job. I think the insides of our pocket, the pockets have been really good. Um, and those guys are playing a lot of confidence, and they're they're rolling off the ball. And, and Parker Hesse's had a pretty big impact in that run rushing attack as well. If I could sneak just one more in here, Coach. You know, sure. uh, I, I know obviously you were listening to all the groaning about Kyle Pitts getting the ball more, and that's clearly why you threw him the ball more this weekend. I kid in jest, but um, you know, was there anything different done, or was it just just a different defensive game from Seattle's standpoint that allowed him to? see the ball more early and often? You know, we've targeted them uh, pretty much the same. You know, it's just, you know, the defense has a say. And then, like I said, it's a you know, give and take. And it's probably uh, said it many times why Drake has been as open as he has early in the season. But still, we got to evolve. And you never want to – we haven't played any of these three games. When you really dissect it, we haven't played them the same. We've gone in there with different strategies, and there's a lot of different subtle things that I'm not going to get into. But um, – we th we thought there were some opportunities early in this game, Mr. Mark, that we wanted to try to exploit. Um, that's why you saw the first play. Uh, we got a look that we had seen and uh, something we hadn't shown before. And um, again, the way that went, I mean, even though we don't make that play and we had to pull up at the last second, um, I think they feel that early, you know. And so there's sometimes uh, even when we don't make those plays, at least the, the DBs you get them you get them thinking a little bit that they say there's something different this week and. Um, and thankfully, you know, we got Kyle in a rhythm. I thought he finished really well with the ball in his hands on that screen. I mean, he was 
humming down there to, to truck the guy right at the, at the end and then ran a play pass to him and, you know, they, they bit on it and the guy grabbed him and, you know, Marcus ran in the next play. I mean, he has a huge impact and I can go on and on and on. But uh, we'll continue to look at him. Mark. He's a huge part of our success. Um, he's played really good football. And if you really study the, uh, the run game too, he's he's becoming a complete, complete player. And it's only going to bene- benefit us in the long run. Guy's 21 years old. I know everybody wants the uh, the video game you know, numbers, and so do we. But he has such a huge role, uh, at, you know, and, and has had a, a huge part in our success uh, offensively. Josh, you got a follow up? Yeah, Arthur, what uh, went into the decision to have Brian Edwards inactive? Last week or no, yesterday? No, it's the decisions we make every week, Josh. We'll do what we think is best for the game plan and, and the team. So sometimes it's not necessarily that player did something wrong. It's we feel we got a good matchup somewhere else or there's somewhere we need we feel like we need to uh, help on special teams and we'll make those evaluations. It's a, it's a good problem to have when you got a lot of guys we feel, feel like we can, uh, you know, activate or, or uh, put up or down. So and we'll keep working. I mean, he's young in our program and we're not down on Brian. And, uh, It'll pay off. I mean, this is, you know, it's different. I mean, he's learning a new system and we got guys doing really good things, uh, subtle things that not always just comes up in the passing stats. Maybe my memory is just wrong, but it feels like you, you're you rolling more guys in early, rotating more guys than you did early last season. A, is that accurate? B, is that just because you've got more guys that you feel comfortable with or you're just trying to get more guys ready because maybe – you got toward the middle and end of last season and didn't feel like you had enough guys ready. You kind of answered it all right there, Josh. You're not far off. So, um, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I mean, that's it's what you evaluate, you know. I mean, every, every season is different. Um, so, you know, we, we had a lot of – we still have a lot of young guys, and we do. And they're playing, and they're playing pretty good football for us. But that team last year had probably some uh, – it did. It had more veterans on it. Uh, some guys, older guys, and then early on, you know, you're um, relying on those guys and you're, and you're still bringing along. And, and the one thing I think that paid off for us is Richie Grant. You know, everybody, again, is another guy that everybody wanted instant gratification. Richie Grant's playing pretty uh, damn good football right now. Yeah, He really is. And sometimes if you rush guys too early, it could be a detriment to their career. And, uh, and you just got to evaluate it case by case. And there's been a plan. And uh, we, we objectively look at it all the time. And it's good to see it pay off for guys like Richie. But every year is different, Josh. Uh, you are probably seeing more guys in there. Uh, you, you you definitely are. So, Trevin Gray from the AJC. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. So, earlier, obviously, we talked a bit about um, how important it was to have Kyle Pitts blocking and opening up the run game. Obviously, the offensive line. Uh, had a, a huge impact as well. Can you talk a bit about what you saw from the offensive line and also the defensive line and their aggressiveness and kind of your message to them in opening up the game on both sides of the ball? We're just trying to continue to improve and uh, win, win the lines of scrimmage. And, um, you know, our rushing attack, it, I, I say this all the time, it goes, it's all 11. When you watch some of those runs, you watch that big run by Patterson when he cuts back. You're going to watch Kyle Pitts. You're going to watch Felipe Franks and Avery Williams. Make those spring those blocks. That's what how those become, you know, seven, eight yard runs into explosive runs when you get guys buying in and all 11. And so, um, certainly the offensive line, they're playing really well. Uh, really like where they're trending. And it's going to be a unique challenge. We got a, a huge challenge this week against Cleveland. Uh, their front, the aggressive front, penetrating front. We know everybody knows about Miles Garrett and they'll, they'll be ready to roll. I mean, everybody sees the tape. I mean, they're going to, it's going to be, a really physical game on Sunday. You know, they're going to try to run Nick Chubb 500 times and we got to stop him. And we're going to try to run the ball and, and play our game too. And we'll do different things. So uh, defensively, uh, you know, I think TQ Graham is playing really well. A lot of subtle things. I think some of his pressures late affected the quarterback and he kind of grinded out some rush. Um, and that's why you keep chipping away. And uh, I think Lorenzo Carter, did a nice job setting that one up and uh, those are the games within the games. You know, he's going against Charles Cross and some other way he's rushing him, and then he got him, and then, you know, we needed a play, and he had set that thing up, and he was able to to, to pull him back in there and make a big big sack, and the same thing with Grady. So, uh, please, and obviously there's a lot of things we got to clean up, but some of these young guys and we're making some pretty good progress. 
So also, obviously, Mariota is comfortable running the ball in the scrum situation, and sometimes with those design quarterback runs, are you encouraging that a lot more, um, having a, a mobile quarterback, or are you – like how how are kind of the schemes going with Mariota in the run game? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give you a big picture thing. Certainly, uh, there's some things we ask Marcus to do, but I'm not going to get into the schemes. I'm not going to give uh, Kevin and uh, Joe Woods that satisfaction right now. All right, got a follow-up from uh, Armstead Zeno. Uh, Marcus Mariota in his career has never been, at least statistically, one of the more accurate passers, save 2018 uh, when he was above 68%. You've got him at the highest in his career, you know, uh, in every other year at this point. That said, from uh, an untrained eye, a couple of throws seemed like while they were completions, they weren't as accurate as they needed to be. Uh, like the one in the second quarter to Drake down the sideline was a little behind him. He had to stop in his route to come back for the ball a little bit. The things like that, is that, is that how much of a focus is that? Are you, or where are you with Marcus's accuracy slash completion percentage and, and how much does that, if it needs to improve? You know, I think the thing too, Mark, on, on that play you're talking about, uh, he had pressure. Sometimes when a quarterback can't set their feet, you know, uh, you'd obviously would have loved to hit that, that play clean. You know, the one backed up uh, Drake, there so he was able to get that throw off well Mar what marcus has is he's got a very very quick release and so at certain times in different situations that's why i think he's very effective in the red zone like the the, the one he threw the drake in uh, la those are tight window throws he's got a really quick release um i think he's throwing the ball really well down the field you know we've hit some big big plays with some good timing and accuracy because there is an art to that you know when you're anticipating guys breaking out of that when you're running some of the the, the play action stuff um, but yeah, that one backed up, you know, usually the case and the same thing in LA, uh, you know, if you, if you get any kind of pressure, you don't set your feet, you know, you're not, you're using all your arm and, uh, and then you can make the, the subjective argument. Like when he fell down against LA and he popped up, I don't know how many guys could do that. Uh, and the same thing yesterday, he does it. He has got good spatial awareness and yeah, we're continuing. We're, we're always working that stuff, Mark, but, uh, we've seen a lot of progress. Thanks, Josh Kendall. You mentioned the pass rush on the final drive, and, which probably made the difference in that game. Could y'all sure. have done that last year? I mean, Josh, you're comparing two different teams. And, um, you know, I love those guys that played for us last year, so I'm not going to sit there and, you know, I, I'm happy where we're, we're trending, and uh, this is a different team. Do you, let me rephrase it. Do you feel more confident that you can cut, dial up – I know it's not used per se, but – you can dial up pressure packages the way this group is playing right now, as opposed to you at times last year. Again, Josh, you can rephrase it. I, I'm not going to say anything that negative about those guys that put on line for us last year. Just where we're at currently in our situation, uh, we're a different team, different personnel. Josh, um, I go through it all the time with all the coordinators, and that's my job as a head coach. We go through all the personnel stuff as we continue to build and evolve and evolve. So. Um, not really sure exactly what you know you're trying to get out of that other than the fact that it's a different team we got different players and and we try to play the best our ability the strengths of our players even I, I, even before you were asked you you brought up the 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 subject of establishing a home field advantage um mm -hmm. uh and how important that is for for this team taking the next step you guys are just leaving a place where you had a lot to say about uh, Seattle's uh, home field advantage. Um, do you think it's just a matter of uh, getting some wins and and the noise and the the uh, the the empty seats will disappear, et cetera? Do you think it's just going to be a couple of wins to get that going here in Atlanta? We got to get people. I mean, we are in the sports and entertainment business, Charles. And the fundamental essence of the business is create a customer. <laughs> I've beaten in my head as a young age, yeah. Charles. So it's not lost on me. We got to do our part. And that's what we, you know, that's what it is. I and mean, you people forget that. So, yeah, we need to give people a reason to want to come watch. I think we're trending. I think we're, uh, you know, that hadn't been perfect. Um, certainly, we, you know, would have loved to have uh, started the week one at home the right way. We didn't. And so there's a lot of painful lessons learned and we continue to improve. But we, we got some exciting young players and it's an exciting brand of football, in my biased opinion, when you watch our, our guys play. But we got to do our part. And when I'm talking about Seattle, it has nothing to do with comparison to us. It's a reality. Teams have lost games because they couldn't handle the noise and the situation. If you're not ready for it, shame on you. 
And I thought for the most part, it wasn't perfect. We only had two penalties yesterday overall. It's a pretty disciplined game. And, uh, and that, that's the art of the coaching, you know, things we got to change, uh, logistically take advantage of, which I thought helped us in the red zone. Again, we wasn't perfect. So you can dissect a couple plays, but it was certainly better than it was in LA. And uh, I thought that was the difference.